Good afternoon. It's about 3.20 p.m. on a Monday, January 17th, 2022. The task during this video is to finish reassembling this laptop computer. Two Saturdays ago, during the live stream, I disassembled this laptop for the purpose of diagnosing the trouble with it. The display screen would not come on. I was able to connect an external monitor and get a display. And the history of this model computer says that if you disconnect and reconnect the display cable, that may be sufficient. So that did not succeed for us. So we, we I mean, myself in the chat room during the live stream, diagnosed that the, the display screen and or the cable was defective. So we found and ordered off of eBay the replacement I should say replacements for those devices. This is the replacement for the display screen at $64.34. I'll just float the mouse over these different thumbnail pictures of it. On this tab, I have the display cable. As I float the mouse over that, you can see the way that it looks. This black end connects to the motherboard and the the other end with that kind of gold tape on it connects to the display panel. This cable that runs up to the top of the display is for the camera. While I was working on it, uh, Catherine Hauserman, a regular viewer on my channel, actually did the research and found these two items, which greatly simplified the ordering. After we finished the live stream, I placed the order for those devices. On the live stream this past Saturday, during the live stream, we, I, I assembled the, the screen and the cable, uh, compared them with the old ones. There were some differences, but it looked like they would function fine. We tried to turn on the computer and get a display image, but that didn't work. And one theory um, presented by somebody in the chat room and during the Zoom session, because we uh, some of them come into the Zoom session and we can talk uh, about what we think. But the thought there was that when I previously had switched the computer to send the display out through the VGA port, that it is stuck in that mode until I switch it back and I needed the keyboard connected to do that. At the time, I did not have the keyboard connected. So I just figured we'll go ahead and reassemble the computer. Then we got to a point where I realized, oh, wait a minute, the hard drive I wanted to replace the hard drive with a SSD. The client approved that expense. And I and we were just going along on that live stream. I didn't want to do it during the live stream. So during the uh, after the live stream, I made an image from the old hard drive to an external drive, and then I restored that image to this SSD. Now I could have connected both of these drives to a computer and just transfer the image straight from one to the other, but I like to keep a copy of the entire image on one of my external drives. So the way I did that is I took the drive out of the laptop, the spinning hard drive, and connected it internally to another computer that I have here for servicing. I booted off of a USB memory stick to Macrium Reflect created the image file onto my external drive and then connected the SSD internally to that same computer and restored the image. Now, one thing that I'm concerned about, well, no, I'm not concerned about in this case, but something that does come up sometimes on laptop computers is the old spinning hard drives sometimes are thicker than the replacement SSDs. So I'm trying to get this into a place where you can see it. If I align the bottoms, then you'll be able to see by the chrome piece. I don't know if I can show this. Um, that I had, okay, I can show it this way. Let's go to camera three. Let's go over here to camera three. And stop that reminder from ringing. Yeah, over here on camera three, I think I could show it here. When they're both sitting flat on the desk, there's a pretty significant difference in height 
where the hard drive is taller. Now when there's mounting brackets on the side or when there's some kind of a cage that encloses the drive, sometimes you gotta work with a little bit to figure out how to get it to sit well in the computer. Can I show it this way? Let's see. There you can see on the bottom of the drives a little bit of a lip difference. Maybe it's three thirty seconds of an inch. I want to say it's more than a sixteenth of an inch and less than an eighth of an inch. If I align the bottoms and then get it right over that Chrome CD drive, you can see the difference better. So it's not an it's not an insignificant difference depending upon how the drive is is installed. Now this magnetic pad out there is how I keep the screws in order for each element that I remove. I, keep, I put the screws in a different square, a different grid on that magnetic pad. And then this plastic box over here is how I keep track of the component parts so that they don't get mixed up with other things because when I disassemble a laptop it might stay disassembled for a while. In this case, it only took a week. I've had them disassembled for multiple weeks by the time we get all the replacement parts in. So what I'll start with here is reinstalling the, um, well, installing the SSD drive. This one has a, an adapter, a connector, right on the, uh, on the motherboard. So I'll plug it in there. And then there's two screws on the bottom that go and that uh, get inserted through the bottom. So I'll get my magnetized screwdriver and pick up one of those screws. The magnetized screwdriver is a little bit stronger than that magnetic pad. So I can just pick up the screws with the screwdriver. And then Screw that one in, pick up the next screw, mount it in the screwdriver screw that one in. Don't over tighten it. I'm just using finger pressure here with just a little bit of finger pressure. Um, choked up like when you choke up on a bat it, it it gets a little stiff it was a little stiff at points like I, th I think there's some maybe some lock type type lock tight type of material on the thread so I want to be sure that it's completely screwed in but I don't want to over tighten it I also installed an, an upgrade to the RAM. This is an older computer, very simple um, usage of it. It only had four gigabytes of RAM and she was using, and it's a, it was a spinning hard drive using Windows 10. So some of you will cringe at that because you know that that was a slow computer. I have the um, Wi-Fi wire connected. I have the display cable connected. And I did that during the live stream. Now, I wanted to show the reputation this particular model computer has is that where this wire goes into the hinge is has a reputation or a suspicion of the wires breaking internally because of when the lid is opened and closed. I want to try to show on this video how much movement there is. So that's the wire right, right here at my fingertip. I'm going to try to show how much movement there is when the lid is manipulated. There that wire is kind of stretched back. I'm going to try to get that closer because I think that's a worthwhile thing. I'm going to pause the video here and reorganize. Now there's a good close up of that cable. Here's the, the tip of my screwdriver touching that, that cable. That's the display cable right there. And it's got kind of a kind of a cloth covering on it. And this cable retention 
guide right here is just preventing the cable from going back too far. So it's it's got this freedom here. It's not tight, it's not strained, but here as I manipulate the lid, you can see how much movement there is there. So you can imagine over years of opening and closing a computer that those wires inside, they're very tiny because there's, there's like 30, 30 wires in there. There's a, no, it's a 40 pin connector, both at the motherboard and at the uh, screen size, side. So somehow there's 40 different connectors going through that cable. So you can understand how that could wear it out over time. I'm going to pause the recording again. That close-up view was given uh, provided by just the standard Logitech C920 webcam. Nothing special. I'm really pleased with these webcams. Now let's get back to the task at hand. If I've got that lined up okay. Yeah. I don't need the label anymore on that drive. You might have noticed that I had the, the old drive and the new drive labeled. The same time that I was working on this, I was working on an old drive and a replacement SSD for the computer that I used to um, back up and then restore the image for this computer. So I try to keep things labeled around here. Sometimes I drop the ball and wind up regretting it. Next what I want to do is come to the uh, service guide from Dell's website. It's a service manual they call it to let it guide the reassembly of, of the computer. Once I've disassembled and reassembled any particular model computer enough times I'll go without the service manual, but I've learned by making mistakes that it, it pays to follow the manual until I really have a high level of confidence to where I can pretty much describe it, uh, the, the disassemble and reassemble procedures. So here I'm going to click on display and that's going to take me into the section for removing and replacing the display. Well, I've already actually replaced the display, so I don't need that anymore. But what this does is it gives me the following sequence. So after replacing the display assembly, I need to, uh, let's see, replace the screws and the cable and the routing guide and the, the Wi-Fi card and replace the screws at the base of the computer. I've done that. Now this section doesn't have anything about the hard drive because that's a separate task. So I've, I did that separately, but now I'm ready to move on to the next step, which is replacing the palm rest. So when I click on that, it takes me to the section for replacing the palm rest. Here's the replacing portion. This part up here is removing the palm rest, but they have a specific section for replacing the palm rest. Now, usually it's just reversing the procedure but sometimes there could be a little extra caution or piece of instruction. So follow the instructions before you begin. Uh, that's always the same, so I've already got that covered. Slide the tabs on the palm rest into the slots on the computer base and gently snap the palm rest into place. Connect the speaker cable. Slide the touchpad cable power button to their connectors. Uh, press down the latches to secure them, close the display, turn over, replace the 10 screws. Then we go on to the keyboard. Now if I scroll down a little bit, no, there's no, there's no picture in the replacing the palm rest, but this part up here for uh, removing the palm rest will show me the pictures as a reminder. So this part up here was for those 10 screws on the bottom. So here what they were telling me about, about those two tabs on the back. Slide the tabs on the palm rest into the slots on the computer base and gently uh, snap into place. Uh, what more could I say in guidance about that? I don't, I don't think so. I don't think there's any more. So on the, the palm rest itself, I like to identify these tabs and get an understanding of how they connect and how they'll snap in place. 
by looking around at them. So all of these have a, are basically a socket that a tab is going to connect into. And then on the computer itself, there's, there's tabs that kind of have a, a hook shape to them. And what usually happens is you, it, it usually prefers to go in one end first, either the back side or the, or the front side. So back here on the on the back of this computer, I see actually five really prominent holes there, gaps. And on this on this side, on the palm rest, that's actually got a, a hook. Also looking at the cables before putting this down to be sure that they're not getting pinched in a wrong location. There's that one and that one. That's all I've got to do with oh this one. So this one's for the touchpad. This one I think is maybe speaker and this one over here, power button. All right, I'm going to go back and look at the manual because it's being a little resistant to me. Make sure I didn't miss something. Slide the palm, the tabs of the palm rest. Now let's go back up here. I think in removing this, there was an instruction to open it all the way. Here's removing the palm rest, remove the battery, remove the 10 screws, remove the keyboard, uh, to avoid damage, lift the connector latch, then remove the cable. That's about the cables. When you disconnect, pull on its connector or its pull tab, not the cable itself. Some cables have connectors with locking tabs. If you are disconnecting this type of cable, press in on the locking tabs before you disconnect the cable. As you pull connectors apart, keep them evenly aligned to avoid bending any connector pins. Also, before you connect the cable, ensure that both connectors are correctly oriented and aligned. Disconnect the speaker cable, lift the connector latches, pull the pull tabs to disconnect the touch pad cable, power button cable. Slide a plastic scribe between the computer base and the palm rest to pry out the, the, the palm rest off the base. And we started from the front right. I, I've, I've learned that wherever they're showing the plastic scribe, that's a good place to start with. All right, coming back here. I'm gonna pause the recording a moment and take a look at something without the pressure of the recording. I rearranged the camera here after realizing what I was pointing out wrong. I previously pointed out these slots on the back. These are what I thought I was trying to connect into and they're not. There's five of them, one, two, three, four, five. And they actually go through, I'm sliding this, I can put the screwdriver through to the back. That's actually a, a complete opening there. And I thought that's what the clips were trying to go into and, and it's not. The, right, the correct clips are these right here. There's four of them. And these clips have a, a, a slot. I can pass the screwdriver through and you can see the tip 
you can see the blade come through the other side that's just a slot and that corresponds to these four clips right here that are not on the back edge of the palm rest I have the palm rest laying upside down on top of the computer now to show how these four line up and these four are a clip here I'm I've, I've got the screwdriver blade under the clip so what I need is to position this palm rest behind these uh, holes or openings and then pull it forward so that those will latch in there so that's a different uh, connection than I was thinking of if I turn this palm rest over and line it up square with all the edges and just press down on it those might have a really difficult time clipping into there I could actually bend a clip so it's useful to really understand how these clips are shaped so I want to slide the palm rest back a little bit and bring it forward a little bit now similarly I have looked at the clips that are on the on the sides of the computer and I know that they'll just press right down and snap into place so now I have the monitor open as far as it will go I'm turning the palm rest over now here it's lined up I'm gonna I'm gonna try to move it back a little bit Sure doesn't want to do that. Try fastening the rest of the clips. They feel like they just, they feel like it feels like it's already down. But this part lifts up. Oh, I'm re I know what I'm remembering now is after removing the screws, this palm rest came up very easily, which means those clips aren't very substantial. See, this is still, this edge is still very easy to come up, but it is all the way down. So I think it's just going to be the screws on this model laptop that really hold the palm rest in place. And this, back on this corner, still has a little bit of a gap. But the screws, I think, will bring it down because it... It presses down with my hand just fine. I'm really, I guess I'm a little, I was a little predisposed to expect these clips to be more difficult. As I'm rubbing my fingers, I'm hearing a snap once in a while, which I think is the clips clipping into place and then maybe releasing because the panel's not screwed in place. Now as I run my fingernails around, it feels like it's is snapped into place. Usually these I commonly experience putting palm rests on palm rests on to take a really substantial pressure to get them clipped into place. Alright, looking back at the manual for replacing the palm rest, 
gently snap the palm rest into place. Yeah, I, was, I guess I was expecting a little more than gentle. Connect the speaker cable. All right, speaker cable is right here. Now I'm saying that's the speaker cable from memory. And if I'm to follow my own guidance, I should actually confirm that's the speaker cable by coming back up here. And it's that one, number four, and right here shows that, yes, indeed, that's the speaker cable. Next, slide the touchpad cable and power button into their connectors, press down on the latches to secure them. So touchpad and power cable would be this one and this one. So number one and number three, power button and touchpad. There's the power button and touch pads over here. Now this one has, has a black tab I don't know what to call this type of connector. I think it's also a zero infor insertion force connector. But there's a black tab here, kind of a shoulder that pulls up and then you put the wire in and then press down on that. I'm gonna try to get a better camera view pausing the recording. Okay, here's that black shoulder connector and it pulls up when releasing the cable. And here's the cable over here. Now you're supposed to hold it by the blue tab in order to manipulate it. Now it's hard for you to see that there's the black ribbon cable back here. Let me see if I can get a better view of it. There you can see the cable. So then, oh, and this black line that's on that blue tab, that helps you identify that you have the, the wire all the way in and that it's level. So there it's in. Then I'm going to press down on the black shoulder tab. And that's fully down. So now if I give a little gentle tug upward on this wire, it doesn't come up. I'm going to pause and reposition for the touchpad cable. Okay, so here's the ZIF socket. And it's in the up position right now. I'm going to go ahead and push it down. That's what it looks like when it's in the down position. And I'll lift it back up. When it's lifted up, it has a lot of play. And here's the wire with that black line that I described earlier. Grab it with thumb and forefinger. Slide it down into the slot. And I'm, I'm pulling up and pushing back down to feel that I have it all the way in and that it's square. And I'll use my spudger tool press that down. Using the plastic in here is certainly better than that metal screwdriver that I was using earlier. Now it feels to me like it's crooked. Yep, and there's the black line. You can see that it's very crooked.
Okay, let's push back down. Let's see if we can see the line. Yeah, there's a line. You can see that it's parallel to the to the socket. And if we were looking right on the same level as this black shoulder, it it would it would show that it's level. The black line is is level with the black shoulder. But the camera angle that I'm showing you right now is you it, it looks like the black line is above the shoulder, but it's not. Pause recording. Next in the instructions is close the display and turn o turn the computer over. I, again, I follow the instructions because it's easy to miss something. And then also before closing it and turning it over, I just take a visual inspection to be sure I've got everything in place. Turn the computer over, then we're doing the 10 screws. So the next square on my magnetic pad has the 10 screws right here. There's uh, two rows of three is six, and then the first front row has four. So the front row on the, on the computer, and I always do this with the front of the computer facing me. Now there's already a screw in this, in this hole and this hole because those are for the hard drive. So here's one, two, three, four. And then one, two, oh, that is three. Okay, so this, this screw is not, I did already put that in for the drive. Okay, the back row has three screws. There's one, two, three. This one and this one are already in place because those are the hinge. And then this one was already in place as was this one because those are for the keyboard. So there's one, two, three. And then one, two, three. But that was the hard drive. Yes. Oh, that, that is the third. Yeah, that's right. Okay, one, two, three. One, two, three. I'm just sorry. One, two, three. And then one, two, three, four. All right. That took a little more. figuring out than I expected. And that's this one. These screws are all the same length. That's not always the case. And that's what I, in previous experiences, what led me to putting them on the magnetic pad in the same order that they came out. So that when I do have a different size screw, I will get it into the right Just go back to every screw, not just the ones that I just put in, and make sure that they're snug.
Now these two do not have screws in them yet because those were for holding down the keyboard and we haven't got in and we haven't got to that step yet. Going back to the instructions, replace the 10 screws and then replace the keyboard and click on this link and that'll take me to the keyboard. And then the next one after that we just saw was to replace the battery and this is a very simple battery so I won't need the instructions for that. I'm scrolling up and down a little bit to find the part about replacing the keyboard. So these are the steps for replacing the keyboard. This part up here is for removing the keyboard. So those are the two screws that were removed in order to get the keyboard out. And then we started with a spudger tool in the back. And I think there were actually those three clips. And then from the front, I don't think these arrows are really specifying anything in particular. And then there's the connection. So replacing the keyboard. Slide the keyboard cable into the connector on the system board. Press down on the connector latch to secure the cable. Slide five tabs at the bottom of the keyboard into the slots on the palm rest. So five tabs, I'm thinking, oh, there they are. We can actually see them. One, two, three, four, five. Gently press around the edges to secure the keyboard under three tabs on the palm rest. The three tabs referring to there would be these three on the back. Close the display, turn it over, replace the two screws, and then replace the battery. Here we can see where those five tabs are going to go. Three, four, five. And on the back side, we can see the three, those are spring-loaded clips. When the rim of the keyboard gets pressed down under them, then they'll just spring into place. Here's the ZIF connector for the keyboard, and I'll pause the recording to get a close view of that. I have the camera coming in from the left side of the computer. Here's that ZIF connector, zero insertion force for the keyboard cable. So the cable goes in into the slot to the point where the, the line uh, appears to be lined up correctly. And then once it's in place, we clamp it down. This is a little bit tricky to do because we've got a fairly short ribbon cable on the keyboard. So we turn the, turn the keyboard over and the keyboard's kind of laying on the back of my hand. Now this, this ribbon cable has that light blue line running horizontal across the conductors. And that's the line that we use to judge that we have it in straight. And also there's these tabs on the side of the, of the blue section of the cable that have a place inside that connector where they clip. Now this ribbon cable doesn't have one of those tabs for me to hold as I'm putting it in, so I just use my fingers on the ribbon cable. I'm going to pause for a moment and see if I can really actually see the notch where those little tabs are supposed to connect to. 
And yes, I can. So there, the camera's <laughs> really, really close. I'm not even sure I'm going to be able to put the cable in while it's this close, but here's the tab on the right side. That, that little manila colored tab right there. I need to get that notch past that tab. So the ribbon cable has to come in at, a, at an upper angle and then set down past that tab. Yeah, that is a wonderful view. And you can see how that light blue line is parallel with the back edge of the ZIF connector. Now I gotta see if I can get <laughs> my other finger in there or something in there to close the, la the latch. There. Then a little bit of a tug and I can tell that it is solid. All right, pausing the recording. Well, that was informative for me. I've never tried to actually see that notch. So now put these five notches into the sockets where they fit and then press this edge down. Now this has a, a, a metal lip along here that has to push down beneath those clips. There's three clips there. As long as they're all latched, we're good to go. Checking it out to see if it feels good. Yeah. Then close the lid, put the battery in. Dell Inspiron image. Here's the Windows logo. And when we were trying to test the screen while it was just all connected, I think we saw those same images that I just pointed out, but it never came up to the Windows desktop. And I think that's because that it was previously using the VGA cable, but no, I haven't had to do anything on the keyboard to get into Windows. And when we were doing that, um, might call a dry fit test, or I don't know what to call that test, or trying to get a screen image before reassembling the computer entirely. Maybe it was because the keyboard was, wasn't connected or something else that wasn't connected yet that it needed in order to actually get into Windows, but it looks like it's launching Windows here. I've got a finish setting up your device message. That's kind of implying that it has just gone through a Windows update. Continue. And then here's a sign-in screen. So, we're good. Is there anything else I need to demonstrate on this? I don't think so. I'm gonna do a little cleanup on it. The keyboard is a little grungy and the screen is grungy. I'll, I use a eyeglass cleaner and a microfiber cloth for the screen. And similar to for the, for the keyboard area, just spray it on the cloth and run over the keyboard while the computer's off. So that's it for this video. I hope that was useful. Have a great day. Catch you later. Goodbye.